Once again, please welcome to the stage our MC, Wendy Lee Curtis. Here we go with day two of BMC Exchange. Once again, welcome back, everyone. It is so great to see the faces in the room. They're all so beautiful and fantastic. And also all of our wonderful folks online. I see you. If you missed any of the great sessions yesterday, don't forget to check out the recap and make sure you watch those replays. Those replays have some wonderful gems in them. Today, we are all about innovation and what it looks like to capitalize on the opportunities that are ahead. To kick it all off, we're gonna start at the edge. Edge computing, that is. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage, Chief Technology Officer, Ram Chakravarti! Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day two of BMC Exchange. Back there, Wendy asked me, so what are you going to do when you come on stage? Are you going to bust a move? I'm like, nah. She's like, are you going to drop it like it's hot? I'm like, hell no. I said, I can find enough ways to embarrass myself without busting a move or dropping, like, dropping it like it's hot. So it's a rather sedate entrance, but I promise you that the rest of this session is going to be anything but sedate. OK. So we weren't exactly subtle yesterday across all of those sessions when we kept throwing out this word innovation at you left, right, and center. And guess what? I'm actually going to take it up a notch or two. This is going to be focused front and center on innovation. And you know why? Because BMC's focus on innovation has skyrocketed in the past few years. And innovation is embedded in everything that we perceive. Case in point, we established the BMC Innovation Labs nearly three years back. Actually, it was Feb 2020, and the timing was phenomenally impeccable, just one month before the pandemic. And for the first six, nine months, we had really high aspirations, but no customer was wanting to talk with us. Obviously, they had this little bit of a problem called the pandemic that they were more focused on. We persevered. That dynamic changed after the vaccines came out, and boy, have we been on a tear since then. So yesterday, at Jason's and Iman's uh, keynote, you saw the video on predictive service ops. And I know that uh, several of you were at the innovation booths at the marketplace. Those examples kind of exemplify what we do in the BMC Innovation Labs. That's, uh, I'm responsible for the BMC Innovation Labs, so anything good or bad that comes out of it, I'm it. Right. What you'll see is we focus on innovation in two distinct categories, core tech and emerging tech. So let's talk about each of these for a second. As mentioned a couple of seconds back, core tech is perhaps best exemplified by that predictive service ops video and the full length demo that you folks saw. Simply put, Core tech is all about our focus on delivering innovative solutions that enhance our current product portfolio, which is pretty solid. But we focus on the Horizon 2 capabilities to complement what we have in our current product portfolio. So think about AI and analytics and DevOps. Think about service ops and the modern mainframe. That's what we choose to build out and complement with core tech. And core tech is what puts money on the table, definitely for all of us in BMC. And I dare say it's been the focus of the careers for a vast majority of uh, you folks out there. But as solid as core tech is, I am even more excited by emerging tech. With emerging tech, we really focus on innovative solutions that address the business challenges that customers are grappling today and in the future. So think of these as the emerging and unmet needs. So focus areas here, 
everybody knows that the field of data and analytics is a big area of spend across enterprises, across industries. So when you talk data and analytics, we are really talking about data ops and ML ops as emerging capabilities. Another big focus area for us, one that I'll be sharing a little more detail on, is edge computing and IoT, and boy, is that an explosive market. Additionally, given the relentless focus on what we can do for customers, the notion of customer centricity is table stakes, but there's more to do here. So what we focus on is in the enterprise sector, how can we deliver hyper-personalized immersive customer experience with technologies such as augmented reality and virtual reality and what have you. Those are just some examples of what we do in emerging tech. And we do this by ideating, experimenting, testing, refining, and scaling ideas in what we call innovation sprints. And the goal is that a subset of what we incubate on will move into our product organization as the next set of BMC products. Okay, that was chunk one about our focus areas. I wanna talk about the next big chunk in terms of our aspirations for the BMC Innovation Labs and our innovation agenda. This is co-innovation. Co-innovation for us is about customer co-innovation and partner co-innovation. When we talk about co-innovation, I want to assure you that it is a fundamentally important tenet of BMC's overall innovation strategy. I am super excited about the multitude of customer co-innovations that we have underway. We've successfully delivered on a few. We've got a few that are cooking in our innovation cauldron, and then we have a whole bunch of them that are basically planned for the next several months. And next, let's talk about partner co-innovation. But before I come to this, which is an important topic as well. For those of you customers out here, I want to tell you, I want to assure you again and again and again, I'll probably say this ad nauseum, that this is a topic that is near and dear to me. I'm more than happy to have a conversation, but it's not just me. I'm going to ask three gentlemen to stand up. Troy Klein, Eric Anderson, and Sam Lakundi, could you stand up please for a moment? These three gentlemen are the linchpins of the BMC Innovation Labs. Troy Klein leads all our emerging tech incubations and he's the brain behind our edge computing and IoT, uh, IoT incubation. Eric Anderson, who you saw on stage with the Predictive Service Ops, uh, leads our core tech innovations and uh, you can talk to both of them at the booths. Sam Lakundi actually works in our sales organization. He's part of Jason Andrews' organization. He leads the charge on talking to a lot of customers as well as partners on a whole host of co-innovation topics. So any of the four of us, if any of you is interested in having more discussions, I, we had a really rich conversation with a small group of you at lunch yesterday and at various points in time yesterday as well. If some of you are interested in learning more about our co-innovation agenda, just reach out to the four of us at any point in time. Okay, thank you gentlemen. Next, partner co-innovation. Partner co-innovation is fundamentally important to us because we believe that we need to partner or collaborate with the right innovation partner to deliver winning solutions for our customers to address their business challenges. And to do so in a systematic manner, we established the Innovation Preferred Partner Program back in June of this year. So we have, we've been super selective about who we partner with on this co-innovation journey. And it's been really exciting in the last few months. It gives me great pleasure to announce here that our latest collaboration from an innovation partnership standpoint is with what used to be this small digital bookstore that had its genesis in Seattle a couple of decades or so back, and has since morphed into this behemoth that some of you may know now as AWS. In a few minutes from now, I'm going to be joined on stage by a couple of industry luminaries, one of whom is a leader at AWS, and we're going to share some of our perspectives on this innovation partnership, preferred partnership, along with other topics. But before we do that, let me just acknowledge that the term innovation gets thrown about loosely, 
can be nebulous and difficult to understand. But I want to assure you that this is real. Innovation at BMC is real. And I'm super passionate about this topic because innovation is critical to not only creating new solutions that customers need and want, but potentially in fundamentally refining and reshaping the very strategy of your organizations. I believe that innovation is an absolute game changer regardless of the industry you're in. And the pandemic definitely underscored this point by forcing companies to innovate. So across companies, we see multiple focus areas for innovation. Data ops and edge computing are two of the prominent ones that are top of mind for us. I'm gonna focus on edge computing for the next few minutes. All right, let's do a quick show of hands for all of you here. How many of you have been hearing about or talking about edge computing in the past couple of years? All right, I see quite a few. And how many of you have started to feel a little overwhelmed with the explosive growth in edge devices and the need to quickly figure out how to manage it all? Okay, slightly fewer hands, but some nevertheless. Okay, let me maybe level set, right? Okay, we have a little bit of... I define edge computing as the storage processing and management of data close to the edge, said otherwise at the edge, but it's not just about the data, it's also about these very assets, the OT assets or edge devices that create this data. So this is remarkably different from the central computing paradigm that all of us live and breathe. In central computing, we have data that is collected at these devices and we send it to your central compute core to store, filter, action, and what have you. In edge computing, by contrast, this is done at the edge of your network, much closer to your actual devices. So this is a new deployment paradigm, and if you consider the hybrid IT landscape comprising of multiple hyperscalers, your virtual private cloud, your on-prem data center, and the venerable mainframe, in some cases, many cases, you are now adding another puzzle piece to the equation, which is edge computing. So why are we super excited about this? Spoken to a bunch of different analyst firms. Each of them has different predictions. We went with one that may be a tad conservative. So Statista basically predicts that the edge computing market is going to be around $275 billion or thereabouts, US dollars, by 2025 or thereabouts. That is complemented by the explosive growth in the IoT space. The number of connected devices worldwide is expected to go, grow threefold from about 10 billion devices in 2020 to nearly 30 billion devices by 2030. And that promises a lot of opportunity. Okay, edge computing, simply put, offers tremendously exciting opportunities for companies across industries to differentiate themselves from their competition. And this is because we gain the ability to manage a whole new set of devices and a whole new set of data. But a cautionary note here, with that as the new deployment paradigm that adds to your already complex hybrid IT landscape, it's going to introduce additional complexity. And it is this very explosion of devices coupled with the nascency of edge computing solutions, where we at BMC see a huge opportunity, both to innovate and to help our customers manage this very complexity. Now, additionally, the central cloud is not going away. Statistics reveal that two thirds of enterprises will use multiple clouds by 2025 or thereabouts. So you're gonna have your central compute, you're gonna have your on-prem, you're gonna have your mainframe, and you're gonna have your edge. So there's a lot more data that's floating around that is crying to be exploited and generate value for your organizations. So, the point I want to make is where BMC is going to focus in this market. To do so, I'm gonna tease out how we view the edge computing market. 
Before we get to these particular buckets, I look at the broader edge computing market in three distinct segments. One is the edge computing stack, which is all the devices and the embedded software and what have you. Then you have edge management, which is where we are focused on, I'll come back to it. The third piece is edge business applications. So edge management is where BMC is doubling down on, has doubled down on, and this in turn comprises five segments. These being edge data management, edge analytics, edge automation, edge asset lifecycle management, and edge security. And these five areas are of interest to us because for us, we believe that we are uniquely positioned to help customers take advantage of new devices that produce enormous amounts of new and not yet fully harnessed data. And I'll tell you in a few minutes why we believe that we have a right to play and we are your right partner, innovation partner in this market. Hold that thought. We are focused on edge management for a couple of reasons. One, it is the bridge between helping you connect to a whole host of edge devices and assets and getting that data, as well as serves as the foundational cornerstone for all of your business applications. That's reason one. Number two, edge management, the market is the sol really nascent and suboptimal in terms of the solutions that are out there. There are some point solutions from a different set of vendors who capture action and store the data differently. So what does this do? It adds to the very complexity that you, our customers are trying to solve for. So that being the case, that is exactly why we want to double down, and I'll tell you why we have the permission to play again in a few minutes. Hold me to it. But before we do so, I actually want to underscore a couple of points by segueing a little bit into the consumer space. Now, the growth in edge devices in the consumer space has been absolutely mind-boggling. Just last week, I saw this ad for a smart bird feeder. I was like, what the heck? I'm scratching my head, right? And the sheer growth has my head spinning. I don't know about you folks, but at the consumer level, I'm like daunted. Deloitte did a survey recently that found that the average US household has a total of 22 connected devices. And I would wager that in many cases, us as consumers have almost as many apps to manage these devices. So we're going to do another show of hands. Before we do that, I want all of you to think about and reflect on your home setting. Think about all the connected objects in your home, your car, your everyday objects in life. So think security system, sprinkler system, garage door opener, smart kitchen appliances. I definitely love uh, a smart coffee maker that has Wi-Fi that tells me, hey, brew a coffee, even before I walk over uh, there, to my preference. Think smart bird feeder and a whole host more, right? So now let's do a show of hands. How many of you have at least three smart apps to manage the connected devices in your everyday life? Okay, a whole lot of folks. Uh, let's up the ante here. How many of you have at least five different smart apps to manage these devices? Quite a few still, all right? I'm gonna up it further. How many of you have at least 10 smart apps to manage each of these connected devices? Okay, not as many, just a few, okay? I'm willing to bet that if we'd done this show of hands three years back, we would have capped it at three. So that's my point about this proliferation of connected devices at the consumer level. But it's not just in the consumer space. It's also in the enterprise space, which is what our area of focus is. There are multiple industry verticals that feature more than 100 million connected devices. Some of these include utilities such as power, water, gas, air conditioning, shipment, storage, transportation, warehousing, and also government, wholesale, and retail. But that's not all. 
Edge computing and IoT are strategic topics of strategic importance and increasingly prominent in manufacturing-centric industries as well as with communication service providers. It is this opportunity at the edge that is directly impacting the enterprise space and is front and center of the focus of the BMC Innovation Labs. And this has motivated us to develop our Helix IoT and edge computing solution for the past one year plus. Rather than me being a talking head to wax eloquence about our Helix IoT and edge computing solution, we've actually got a pretty nifty video that uh, spills the beans. Let's roll the video, please. Technology impacts every part of our lives and is doing amazing things. In the world of information technology, IT, and operational technology, OT, the possibilities for the future are endless. The concepts that govern how we run and manage IT can be extended to the physical operations world. From industrial equipment to the processes that run them, vehicle charging stations, and point of sale technology. It's all about the ability to break down internal silos, converge technology and processes, while tapping into the data across and outside the organization. First, you discover all of your devices and connections. Then, you monitor and measure their performance. And here's where it gets exciting. AI-driven automation and data orchestration at the edge can proactively identify issues, prevent a failure, fix things in real time, and deliver new tasks to tackle. That means all your connected things can be smart. Connected devices are everywhere, but with little standardization, some devices that were never intended to get on the internet are and aren't so smart. A need to better manage the connections, the things, and the software that runs them emerges. BMC Helix IoT Edge will allow us to bridge the gap between IT and OT, the IT-OT convergence. Let's imagine a retail environment. What if you could view the layout of all of your assets? physical and traditional software assets. As new devices come online, what if you could tap into the power of AI to automatically discover, securely monitor, and fix issues over their entire life cycle? Imagine the possibilities of merging technology and consumer behavior data. Now we can manage supply better, provide competitive pricing, and even distribute coupons or deals easier. Or let's imagine a complex manufacturing floor that also needs to connect to other manufacturing plants. The management of equipment and business productivity can get complicated quickly. Combining technologies for IoT with AI sparks innovation. Ultimately, we can create a paradigm shift to turn the data generated by machines and processes into valuable insights. Helix IoT Edge uses AI-driven management to not only discover and monitor new assets in real time, but to predict issues before they become problems. It collects and harnesses high-frequency machine data in real time at the edge to diagnose and predict various types of failures to stop them from happening in the first place. An idea or a vision to modernize your business's infrastructure is all it takes to face the future head on. Be ready for tomorrow, today, with BMC. Thank you. That was some really cool shit, if I may say so myself. Okay. I did tell you earlier that I had a reason for why I believe BMC is your innovation partner in edge computing and IoT. So what has BMC be doing, been doing remarkably well for the 40 plus years that we've been around? Managing your IT assets for the most complex and the largest organizations worldwide. Guess what's happening in edge computing? The things that we've been solving for for the last 40 years are just finding their way into edge computing. All the stuff that I said about edge management, 
That's stuff that we do today for our customers in the IT space. We've got a rich, a treasure trove of knowledge that we've taken from the IT space and we've applied it to the OT space. And that's why we believe that we will be successful in helping you realize value from your edge computing and IoT aspirations. This is a super exciting, really dynamic space, and we're looking to tackle many of these issues with BMC Helix IoT Edge. And let me just encapsulate the dual sets of benefits that customers are going to have from our BMC Helix IoT and Edge computing solution. For our IT customers, this solution is basically going to help you reduce cost and complexity and mitigate risk for a completely new set of assets and data. And for all your business counterparts, it's going to help provide access to real-time data from an entirely new set of, set of assets to enable dynamic decision-making. That gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't know about you folks. Okay. Enough, about the, enough of this monologue. I'm going to now invite a couple of friends to join me on stage to help noodle around what our perspectives are on topics like the edge, like the cloud, and what innovation looks like in their respective worlds. Please welcome Chief Content Officer and Co-Founder of the Acceleration Economy, Bob Evans. And Bob? Hello. OK. We had, a, we had a slight delay in uh, information going from the edge to the central computer. That's why we need to solve at the edge. And Bob, welcome. And oh, please also join me in welcoming the global head of industrial IoT and digital twin partners at AWS, Prabal Acharya. Sir, good to see you. Okay. Now I get to put you guys on the spot for the next several minutes. So Bob, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and share a couple of details that you'd like to with the folks here. Yeah, I have always run, my big thing is you want to play hard to get. You know, they were trying to push me out from back there, but I said, no, 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 I want to wait. I want to wait. <laughs> no, uh, folks, it's great to be here and uh, I think there's never been a better time to be involved in IT, to be involved in business. The opportunities are extraordinary. and We get a chance at Acceleration Economy and Cloud Wars to try to share some of that that's going on. And, um, you know, Ram, I just think you look back at something like, you know, we, we heard that it's a law of physics, that it takes 10 years and two and a half billion dollars to create a new pharmaceutical product, but it was done a couple of years ago in, what, 12 months, 15 months? And I think what's so exciting about what you've discussed today is what we used to think of as impossible is rapidly becoming possible. That's, that's wonderful to hear, Bob. More on that. Prabal, how about yourself? Hey, thank you for inviting me. It's exciting to be here. I mean, uh, great event and uh, the topic. I mean, we're talking about Edge and IoT, which have been uh, kind of immersed for the last uh, 30 plus years uh, through various companies. Uh, what I really liked about your presentation, and, and you brought some few statistics there, I um, want to add to that, saying uh, right now we have 14 billion connected devices. That's end of 2021. Think about that. Um, we are looking at the spend for IoT. Um, this is worldwide, and what IDC is saying is that by 2024, it will be greater than $1 trillion. $1 trillion. I mean, think about that, that IoT. And then um, there was a survey done by Forrester, I believe, and uh, they say that uh, greater than 70% of the enterprises uh, either already using IoT or plan to use IoT in the next 12 months. So this is not just the fun that we are seeing in the consumer space with IoT. Uh, by the way, I love connected devices. My neighbors calls me from the plane in WhatsApp. Now you can do WhatsApp from the plane. It says, hey, uh, do you know that it's raining? I'm saying, yeah, I'm in home. I can see raining. He said, I just switched up my sprinklers. I said, wow, that's great. But that fun, we are now bringing it to the enterprise. And so glad Absolutely. to share the stage and discuss some of those things with you. Couldn't agree more. I have a bunch of cue cards, but guess what? I'm actually blind, so I need to actually remove my glasses and ask you these questions. But you know what? We'll throw this away. Okay. <laughs> so let's, 
<laughs> let's innovation. That's yeah. innovation that's on innovation. the fly, right? Yeah. So let's talk about speaking of. Let's talk about innovation and what it means for you guys regarding moving to the cloud, hybrid, staying on prem, and what have you. So Bob, let's start with you. What does innovation? What are you seeing in the cloud space? Well, a couple things there, Ram and everybody. I think there, there's extraordinary go, uh, innovation going on within the cloud vendors on the technology side. But I think the real power of that innovation, Ram, I think is being unleashed across organizations. And in the video you showed a minute ago, right, they talked about knocking down silos. I think that silos, cultural, organizational, are the biggest impediments to innovation right now. And especially as people in IT are thought of as being fully engaged and immersed in the business, not set over here on some separate island. So the real key, I think, to unlocking world-class, high-speed, high-impact innovation is how is the company set up? Is it to reward that, or are there a lot of you know, fragmented chunks of the company that you have to get through? So once that's unleashed, then business model innovation, customer engagement innovation, the co-innovation, co-creation you talked about, those are so important but they're not gonna happen unless the companies are set up to not only accept it, but to really encourage it. Prabal? So I'm, uh, and, and kind of continuing with what Bob was take, talking about, I mean, at AWS, um, we had a little bit of experience in working with uh, one of our biggest customers. We call Amazon.com as one of our customers. In the space of IoT, I mean, uh, look at that, they have uh, over 500,000 or 500, uh, half a million connected robotic uh, units inside inside Amazon. We have 100 million plus Alexa connected devices. So we had a little bit of uh, experience in those areas. And uh, there are 200 facilities with robotics. And, and so these are, these are some of the things we have done. Now what we are seeing with the customers is that we are meeting the customers at their pace. The innovation, the, the word innovation is there for every company. Uh, some of them want to stay completely at the cloud. Some of them want to stay on the edge. And some of them want to do what we believe the world is going towards this hybrid. Really excited about the Helix IoT Edge and the work we are doing together uh, in the areas of digital twin and areas. Um, um, data center wise, I mean, we are covering the whole world with um, data services. We have 200 plus services just from AWS across uh, 87 um, uh, availability zones across um, so many countries. And we're even opening up new devices and new, new regions. But we move that to the local zones. So for example, uh, at the metropolitan city level, we can now have local zones if you're not connected. And, and this gives you uh, sub-second uh, uh, latency and other things to run, things like uh, autonomous vehicles and, and other, other areas. We can give you outpost, which you can actually post inside your premises to run the same services that you're actually getting from the cloud. So there are things that innovations that we're doing all, all through. Um, and so um, we'll go into more details as we go into, into what we are doing with uh, Helix. With Helix um, IoT Edge, um, we started working a few months ago, but my goodness, the rapid way that the both teams are working that from the customer requirements and working backwards is amazing. Uh, we released a service uh, earlier this year, I don't know whether you know this or not, called AWS IoT Twin Maker. It's a builder service for operational digital twin. Uh, operational digital twin is something that uh, uh, companies have been using for quite some time, but this is now it can be done at scale. This is not the POC level, this is at the production level, at scale across, um, across sites. Invista, one of the largest uh, chemical companies, they make resins and fiber, uh, part of Coke Industries, those of you, uh, maybe it's uh, here also. Um, so Invista came to us and they said, hey, we have a connected worker initiative and uh, help us, like very similar to what we're doing with BMC and they said, hey, help us in doing so. So we took some of our partners. We have 100,000 partners um, worldwide. We took Matterport, this is one of our partners, and worked with them to create that digital twin um, and they presented, if you uh, search for Invista at our reInvent <coughs> conference, they did a fantastic presentation. They can do much better than what I'm seeing. They can pinpoint areas and see with predictive anomalies and see what they're actually doing. And that's pretty much what we are going to be exploring with Helix and, and together. Super, all right. So since we are on uh, speaking about the edge and what have you, I'm gonna get a little edgy here, okay. right? <laughs> so let's talk about industries that are thriving versus industries that are lagging. I'm not even sure if that's a notion, but I'll tee it up anyways. So 
which are the industries in the, in the, that are basically exploiting tech and how do you classify and distinguish between leaders and laggards? Bob, let's start with you and then go over to Prabal. Sure, you know, Ram, I, th I think that was a very valid uh, perspective up until, I don't know, a couple years ago, maybe that big event in early 2020 that changed uh, reality for all of us quite a bit. But you see things now like intelligent concrete. Uh, you see construction companies that are blurring the lines between you know, the materials, the, the engineering that goes on at the site, the deployment of materials, and so on like that. So we're knocking down a lot of what had been these barriers or silos between things. So I think the lines run between industries are blurring. I don't think we have any laggards anymore. Now certainly, you know, we can point to financial services, parts of the healthcare business uh, as being really out on the front edge, but every industry is trying to get into it because there's such an interconnection now through some of the things that BMC and others are doing to provide that. So nobody can afford today, Ram, I think, to be a laggard. It's that, that's a death sentence. Okay. That's uh, sobering and good to know, Bob. I mean, that's the era we live in. Yeah. Prabhab, Prabhal, how about you? What's your point of view? You know, I mean, industries and customers are have different ways. Um, for example, uh, we see uh, one of the um, key differences, some of them are builder customers, some of them are buyer customers. And in that journey, we meet them. So with our partner, um, we meet the builders together. We have great GSI, SIs, and, and by the way, this new term, as you will see it, it's called OTSIs. As the ITOT convergence, as you're seeing this, uh, there this uh, group of uh, partners that's OTSI. We meet at the customer from their requirements where they want to be. So uh, some of them want to spend about uh, six to eight, eight months or maybe 12 months or 18 months in building the service or uh, application that they really need. And then some of them are like, uh, for example, uh, DCP Midstream. I don't know whether oil and gas is here or not. Uh, those of you know, it's a um, Denver-based company across nine states as a pretty efficient company. I've been uh, working with them for a long time. Um, they're getting acquired by uh, Philips 66. But anyway, long story short, they wanted to be a buyer of solution. And for them, the IoT was uh, making sure those compressors that's currently only being maintained through um, manual inspection, one to three months, having real-time data, then pinpoint the anomalies, and then um, direct their uh, whatever the attention that they need. So they went with a company called uh, Shoreline IoT. The, um, it's one of our partners. Innovation, you can be at the, this small level. They have a sensor which actually can send uh, data uh, from the sensor itself directly through cellular um, or Qualcomm all the way to the AWS cloud. But the interesting thing is that that, that uh, device, the sensor, runs on battery for all, over five years, but runs um, one of our innovations like FreeRTOS runs the AI ML on the edge. And that's, that's what, what they're talking about. So again, um, customers, um, they want to do uh, their own custom software development, great. We'll meet them with our partners. And then somebody who wants to just buy out of the box, uh, Shoreline IoT, go and get it. And we'll help with that. So that's kind of our, what we've been uh, working okay. together. Super. So uh, I think we're kind of uh, remarkably stylishly uh, late. Uh, so I'm going to make it a series of rapid uh, fire questions. Very good. 30 seconds for each of you for the next set of questions. Is it cloud versus edge, cloud and edge? What should companies be investing in going forward? Is it an either or or an and? Just share your perspective, quick 30 second responses. Uh, Ram, I think it was probably eight or ten years ago we first started to hear about the edge and what it meant eight or ten years ago is wildly different than what it means now. I think anytime we set up these cloud versus models, it's going to be a, uh, a bad outcome. Mm -hmm. We've got to see it as a seamless continuum. Okay. And there's so many cool things happening at the edge now, uh, very different from a few years ago. Super. Rubal? I'll continue that, that theme. I mean, just, just give me an example from what we are doing together with BMC. We are doing at the digital twin level where we are actually predicting outcome with AI ML. Um, that's kind of uh, um, hybrid, I would say, definitely. The edge is one of the component part and then there. Uh, we are working on orchestrating mainframe modernization with your Control M and AWS. We're doing uh, database modernization uh, with AWS services. And then finally, we are bringing that uh, insight into customer data with uh, Helix Control M workflow data management. So all those, I would say, is a combination of cloud and edge. Um, and we'll meet the customer together 
at the level you need to be, whether you're in a continuum, whether you're in the all in the cloud, all on edge, or you're in the hybrid based on that. Okay. That's what I'm saying. You know, when they said Oceanside chat and they have this awesome uh, image behind us, I thought, okay, we're going to just chill out, tap a couple of cold uh, brews, and just have a nice conversation. But this is like really riveting. Uh, it could probably go on for a couple of hours. But let me uh, try and put you on the spot with one final question each. Bob, first you, acceleration economy. Tell us more about it. Yeah, uh, Rami, it ties in very much with, I think, what you've been talking about, what prabal has been saying here. It's a totally different world today. We think there's a need for a different model of company that shares ideas, analysis, and engages with people, right? The analyst firms of the past have been focused exclusively on the technology. We're trying to say that the better look is what do customers want? What are the business model changes that then drive backward to optimize how that technology is deployed? And uh, again, I think this is the, just the, such an extraordinary time that we're in, and I feel incredibly bullish and optimistic about what technology can do when organizations see it and see their experts within their teams in IT, uh, giving them a chance not just to run the systems, but to drive revenue, delight customers, and build the future of the company. Sounds absolutely exciting. And Bob's actually super modest. For those of you who don't know, he's got the distinction of having been a public speaker at various forums in every continent in this world, with, ex with the exception of Antarctica. And smart money is on him checking that off his list in a couple of months or so. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK. Excellent. All right. Prabal, how about you? I'm going to basically ask you a very deliberate question, something you already touched on. The AWS BMC partnership has been wonderful for quite some time. Share a little bit more about our specific partnership in the field of Helix IoT and edge computing and where do you see this going? Absolutely. Um, so this is an exciting area. The, um, as you presented, the Helix IoT Edge already has that capability of gathering the data. And then you're all already predicting. So what we are trying to do is that now making it uh, go from uh, POCs and scale it to production rapidly. So any of you in the audience want to actually um, do use this connected devices or the data that you are actually getting and then use it part of your IT solutions. This is the continuum that we have been working. We are working with uh, our uh, innovation labs in AWS uh, with their, we have a full team uh, working together, uh, building the operational digital twin and you, you, you did uh, invite all your four uh, leaders uh, in, in the things and those are the people that we have been working very closely with. And then uh, we are already working with your uh, sales organization and, and coming in there. Because, you know, at AWS, one of the things we always believe and, and completely agree with um, what uh, Ram said is starting with the customer, understanding. So, so invite us, understand your problems, and then, then we can actually provide you with a solution by working backwards for your requirements. So it's exciting months and exciting days ahead. Fantastic. So folks, uh, for those of you who may have questions, you may have, want to have small group or individual conversations with Bob and Prabal. They're actually going to be in the dining room in the Arcadia Grill, in a private dining room. So feel free to go join them for any additional conversations you may be interested in having. But with that, I'd like to thank both Bob and Prabal for joining me at this absolutely robust discussion today. It was a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Looking ahead to the next. Okay. Okay. Okay, those guys can bust a move. I'm definitely not going to do any of that. All right? So, I hope this session met your expectations and then some. That's my fervent hope. We at BMC look forward. We're absolutely excited to continue to share our innovations and maybe even co-innovating with some of you in the very near future. In the meantime, please enjoy the rest of BMC Exchange, and I won't keep you from your next uh, presenters. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.